Hello and welcome to 18WJTS Inform. Well, the state legislature has started and joining us in the studio as we are always honored to have him come in, uh, usually every Friday during the sessions, is Mark Mesmer, our state senator. And Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's hard. It's great to be here. It's hard to believe. It's been a year. It's been a well, year. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, end of April. I mean, wow. Time flies, Time flies when you're having fun. That's what it That's is. That's right. That's well, right. Uh, this is a short session mm -hmm. for legislation. What does that mean? It, it's a non-budget year. It's a short session. Uh, we have to get done by March 14th by statute. The budget years run through the end of April. Okay. So we've got less session days. We've got basically three weeks of committee in January. Um, and then the end, last week in January, first week of first couple of days of February, we wrap up voting on Senate bills in the Senate, House bills in the House. And then they all switch chambers and we do it again for, three, you know, for roughly three more weeks. What's happened the last two short sessions is that second half, They've told us you're going to have one less week of committee work, get your stuff done a little quicker, and we're going to get out a week early. So the last two short sessions we've gotten out about a week early, which is okay with me. Well, let's see what happens That's this right. year. All right. Yep. Uh, well, let's talk about some of the, the bills that are now in the Senate mm -hmm. uh, and that some of the big bills that are, will, will get statewide attention. We'll talk about some of the bills that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the, the bills that, I guess, are, are statewide that people are talking about. All right. Well, we, you know, we survey across the state every year during the off session, you know, to kind of get a pulse for, I mean, as we're out talking to people in our communities, and, and then we did some statewide polling, and you know, then we try to identify, you know, the most crucial areas to, you know, to tackle each each session, you know, to keep keep on top of, uh, of the current issues that are, you know, most pressing. And mm -hmm. this this past year, as most years, it comes down to jobs in the economy, make sure we're focusing on what, what, what we can do to improve that, roads, transportation, infrastructure, and education-related issues. Mm -hmm. And the biggest education-related issue we had this year, which w was the first bill we heard out of committee and w will be the first bill we probably wrap up on uh, next week, is, uh, and we knew the I-STEP test was going to have a drop in test scores. Every state that has updated their standards to comply with, you know, which has now changed the No Child Left Behind, the federal I mean, the federal guidelines on, on, you know, testing and curriculum, you know, guide, I mean, all those things that we've been rolling through the last few years, you know, last, this past year was when we changed the, the you know, the testing mm -hmm. standard to the, new, to the new test. And every state that's done it has seen, you know, about the 20-point drop that we saw in our test scores. The, to me, the most logical answer would be you're, you're testing your ch changing your testing mechanism. If your average score before was 70 and your new average score is 55 or 50 or you know whatever those numbers are, during your transition year, why isn't it logical just to, to just reset your curve? Well, the Federal Department of Education won't let you do that. So, so there's some mandates that mandates, kind of make it tougher to do what you want to do. Yeah, what, okay. would, what, what would be the most logical thing to do would be to say, if our average was here before and this is the new average, here's the new norm. Too logical. But, <laughs> sure. so, um, but they don't tell you what you have to do with, you know. And th now, they tell you you have to, you know, you have to test, you have to monitor student progress, all that. If you want to get your federal money, which is about you know, 10 to 15 percent of our budgeting comes from special ed money and Title I money and money for free and reduced lunches and books. I mean, all these things that kind of trickle down from, you know, if you don't meet the federal mandates, you don't get the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be nice to just tell them, you know, keep your money, but that's a pretty, that's a pretty big blow, you know, to deal with financially, so it's the old carrot and stick. You, but what we do have the ability, flexibility to do, is you know how we're going to use that in in scoring our schools and how we're going to use that in in evaluating you know teacher effectiveness. So we've got a Senate bill that's going to deal with the school grading. There's a House bill that will deal with the, the teacher effectiveness grading from those test scores, and we're going to basically pause you know the impact of those grades for a year and and. Let them, you know, let the grades flow through to get your new baseline, but not, you know, freeze everything on last year's numbers. 
It, so. Is that so? There's really just two bills then dealing with that. One in the Senate, and yep, one, one in, in the, the House. House. And, and both it, both had hearings this week. Both will come, come out of committee next week. We'll should have you know amending on the floor and final passage. They'll switch chambers. And before the first half of session is done, occasionally we do that when there's a bill of high priority. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait till the second half of session necessarily to process bills in the chamber. You know, if we decide to go ahead and move one up quicker, so you know, so. As far as you know, teacher bonuses and school grades and all that. I mean, the new test scores are what they are. Moving forward, you know, as as with the new test standard, you should continue to see progress as as you know as people adjust to the new the new test format and and you'll have a new res reset point and then we'll just we'll move forward from there. So. That sounds like it's going to go pretty quick. Yeah, we'll go is, there, is there much opposition or is it just no. pretty good? This is what yeah. we're doing. We I, all would, I would expect unanimous in the House and Senate on both bills. Okay. So really don't see that being, I mean the governor uh, agreed, you know, probably as early as November when we had, you know, that he was, you know, okay with doing that on organizational day. You know, Speaker Bosman and Leader Long in, in the House and Senate both said this is really going to be the first thing, you know, we get taken care of when we get here. We all expected a drop in the test scores. Every, I think 12 or 13 other states have done the same mm -hmm. transition to the type of test we've done, and they've all seen the same impact. So it wasn't a surprise, but, you, you know, we didn't necessarily last year want to say, you know, here's what we're going to do, I guess, you know, until the results were in, and we knew we'd had time to, to deal with it when we gathered back up in January. So... That'll happen pretty fast, then it'll be pretty unanimous. I'd expect unanimous. And then there's a jobs bill? Mm -hmm. um, one, I, I guess the jobs bill that um, Senator Kenley sees as his top focus, I'm not so sure the way they're approaching it is the right way to do. We had the regional cities bill that we passed last year. I saw it as written too restrictively to only about four or five geographic areas in mm -hmm. the state we're going to be able to use it, mine being none of them, um, the regional cities project. But they do have, they did collect more money in, in the, um, in the, what they call the, the uh, tax amnesty period. We were, we were hoping to get up to 84 million. Uh, we ended up collecting about 137 million. So the governor said, well, rather than award two cities up to 42 million, we want to award three cities up to 42 million, and legislature, you fix that for us. Thanks. Yes, gives you something to do. Yeah, and, and I mean, I, why I, I see the you know the benefit for the you know the areas that'll get it, it'll help it'll help those areas you know get some of their projects that they always kind of had on their to do list on whether it's roads or streets or you know where you know the Evansville area will use that money to help speed up construction of some of the the buildings and facilities they need for, you know, the IU Med Center. Right. Uh, it's money that, w you know, w would have come other ways over time, you know, but every city had their, their priorities of projects they wanted to do and, and, and how they'll use it. Um, now, the catch-22 of that is in December, they recalculated re our revenue forecast and we're $300 million down over the next biennium. So we're going to spend 42 million more. We already know we're down 30, you know, 300 million. Somewhere along the way, that you know, that could create a problem. So we'll see what the answers are to that as as the you know, as the process moves through. But that was Senator Kenny, Kenley's, you know, main jobs focus for the short session. We're kind of limited. I mean, you really don't want to open the budget to you know to a free for all. Mm -hmm. So there's you know really limited things that we will do. You know that, that'll you know, that'll tackle, you know, budget-related issues. Uh, probably the next highest priority we've got is roads and infrastructure. And we've heard, we hear, you know, pretty constantly, and, and starting now three years ago in our budget, we, uh, we increased local road funding for road, you know, maintenance and construction by about 35%. We're in the third year of that 35% increase. And, and we'll gain ground, but we had about a 10-year process 10 to 12 years of steady, you know, steady declines mm -hmm. in that, you know, we've bumped and we're heading the other way, but, you know. It takes time. It takes time. Okay. Uh, and there's a, there's a uh, local option income tax reserve fund that each county accumulates and statutorily 
the way it was set up, and, and I'll just use some round numbers so it's e easy to do sure. math. These, may, these probably won't be accurate for, but say in Dubois County, round numbers say that the, the state in 2015 collected a million dollars. Uh, what they do is they take the 2014 actual tax returns that were sent in last year and, and they use that to estimate your payments for the next year. So let's just say last year Dubois County collected, you know, was paid a million dollars because their prior year income was a million dollars when you really don't know until the t returns go in what that number is. So say this year Dubois County actually collected, you know, 1.1 million. If there's not a reserve fund, it's hard to pay, you know, that bump. Yeah, so so the, what, what the reserve funds do is some years, say we collected a million, but the returns only, you know, calculated out to 950000 they, they They take those extra funds, and, and each county has a reserve, reserve fund that they build up. And once they get over, if our annual collections are a million, once that reserve reaches a half a million, they can release the extra money, you know, back to the county. Um, but the, the, the reason, I mean, the reason for that reserve fund is if, if one year we have a bump, you, you've got something to pull from, you know, to, to pay the increase while you're, because you're always kind of collecting and paying, you know, almost a year behind. A year, a year behind. So yeah. it gives you a balance to, to pay from you know what you know because you don't know exactly what that income is going to be the next year so that reserve fund is there what senate bill 67 will do is let us draw down because historically we've you know we've come up with a, a you know a comfort level where that reserve fund balance you know you know could be i mean statutorily now it's 50 percent this will take money that's in those reserve funds and, and pay them out to the counties on a one one-time payment to allow them you know, to have more money for roads. Uh, one time, one, one, time. one it's year. A one, it's a one okay. shot, but it'll be a pretty large boost. Dubois County, I think, is going to receive about three million dollars. Wow. That gets distributed, you know, based, you know, to count. The county will get proportionally about half, and the cities will Split get about half. Okay. That's about where the, you know, so, you know, I think Huntingburg, Mayor Spinner said they'll get 400,000, which he said that's a big bump to them. 75% of that has to be spent on roads. 25% can be spent on other budget items as they need. If you don't need all of that money in this year's budget, you know, if, if Huntingbird's getting 400,000, 300,000 has to go to roads. The other, the other 100 can go to other things. They can either spend it now or put it, you know, in a surplus account and spend it in time okay. on roads. And it'll give all the locals a nice bump. Statewide, it's about $418 million more. In, in local road funding. Uh, there won't be any, and we'll look at how to address long-term, you know, funding of, of roads in, in House Bill 1001 is the bill that looks at what are we going to do down the road to increase the revenue long-term. And, and there's, you know, there's a, be a wide range of, of issues looked at in that, whether it's plate fees, fuel tax, you know, on, on the gasoline tax, or Wheel taxes or, you know, um, tolls on new roads. I mean, all of those things, how, how's that going to fit down the road? So, that, I mean, those are, you know, those are the large, big picture items that we'll be looking at for this session. Okay. Lots of other bills that'll have, you know, some pressing need, but those are kind of ones that have statewide impact on education, jobs, and roads. It's always what's important to people. Yep, it is. Now, what about you personally? You, okay. You've got a, a I've bill. Got a, I've got several bills you're working on. But yeah, I filed six bills. One I knew wouldn't get a hearing because it didn't really move very far last year. The guys who asked, I said, well, you know, I've got, I, I, we could file up to 10 bills. I usually don't max out on our limit. I, I had room. I told them it's probably not going to go anywhere, and, and it won't. It got sent to rules committee, and, and that it's one on what they call video video terminals, gaming terminals for bars and taverns. Um, so told them it wasn't going to probably move, it, it won't. No. Uh, but probably the one that I'm focused on the most, and I look at it as really a government um, streamlining of government services. Uh, if you, any commercial project has to get, a, get filed with the state for, you know, building permits. Uh, all the projects go 
you know, almost all of them, all of them go through the building permit process. A few of them go to the health department for other health code review. Two years ago, we passed a bill that required that building permit process to be done in 20 days. You, you know, you file it within 10 days, they have to, sometimes you could file one and, and they could say, this is the same as 10 of the projects you just did, you know, here's your permit, no review required. Um, anything else they process, they got 20-day response time. I wanted the health department pulled into that two years ago because the ones that go through the health department, there's no limit. And two years ago, the turnaround time was about six to eight months mm -hmm. versus 20 days. That's not very good. Um, and that, incur that includes nursing homes, daycare centers, which I had a couple in my area, church camps, you know, which you wouldn't think, anything with a, with a standalone septic system that's a commercial building, um, hospitals. And <clears throat> the health department, that when, you, when you file your permits to the state for the building permit, construction permit, you can file everything electronically. With the health department, you had to file three-part paper copies. And, and when you mail stuff, and then, oh, you need to do an update, and they mail stuff, and mm -hmm. complete. I mean, 28 days was what, where they are now on a good, you know, on a good turnaround, and some took 45 to 70 days, just depending on what type of project it was. And actually, the bigger hospital projects were the ones that were turning around quicker. And, and you know, the small convenience store who needs to put in a septic system, those were the ones that were taking three, four, five, six months. So this will mandate that they comply with the same turnaround time as the permit process for the building permits and that they take everything in electronically. If I can file my all of my construction documents with the you know, Department of Building and Fire Services, why do I have to then reprint them on paper to send them to the health department? So we'll, we'll basically set up the structure that the that Homeland Security has now for electronic filing and build kind of a front end in it that says, you check the boxes and if part of it needs to go to health department, it will electronically or it'll go to Building and Fire Services and within that 20 day period, you'll get your, your pro, you know, project process. So a, a few small details to nail down on that, but one, that's probably the one that I see as a, a really long drag in, in bureaucratic paperwork that... Um, Try and eliminate the paperwork. Uh, yep. Okay. Streamline, more efficient, quicker turnaround. Uh, I had a nurse, or I had a daycare center a couple years ago. They had hired all their staff, they had told parents you can expect we can take kids on this day. They had their building construction, everything done, all the fire inspections done, and they were waiting for health department paperwork processing for another three to four months, which means they had to lay off those staff members that they had hired. They had to tell those parents who had planned on August 1st being able to bring their kids there to find someplace else to send their kids. That's just an example of you know, one time of, of what the real world aggravation is when you have a bureaucracy that has no no response time mandated and just red tape just gets red worse. Yeah. yeah. So, yep. Well, uh, we appreciate you coming in. You're welcome. Uh, we're going to have to have you come back every week if, every we, week if we can, every sure. Friday at the same time here on 18 WJTS. State Senator Mark Messman will be visiting us. Very good. Good luck with next week's uh, legislature. Thank you, Bill. We really appreciate you coming in. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. Our guest has been state representative, our state, that's because he was a representative, state mm -hmm. senator Mark Messmer, uh, joining us in the studio here for WJTS Inform. We are local people watching local people.